we're going to have a look at the creation of a torus by rotating the area of a circle about a line in three dimensions. And we're going to have a look at the principles of calculus that are involved. If I select the volume and delete it, you can see what we're talking about. Here's the area of a circle and there is the line. Now if we have vertical elements, each element of volume will be a bit like a cylinder. And we can use the constant controller to vary that. We'll show you how all this works later on. Equally, if you use the elements the other way, then what you get is a kind of washer. And again, we can vary the value of B. Let's have a look at the problem as it arrived in an email. First of all, I'm just going to tidy up the squares. Uh, this is a text box in Autograph, so which I've pasted it into. I'm just going to change the raise to the power 2 into squares. And what we want to do is to select that and copy it, because that's the circle whose area is going to be rotated about the line x equals 2a. So we'll keep that as it is. And this is the diagram I'm hoping to emulate. So we'll cancel this one and show you can see it from scratch. And open up a new 3D graph page and right click, enter equation, right click, paste. There's the equation that we copied off the text box. Now A is a parameter and it takes a default value of 1. We're happy with that, so in we go. Ah, now there's no Z in this equation, so it is double click behaving as a cylinder, but if we plot it as a 2D equation, uh, we should get something a bit more appropriate. Um, so X is along here, Y is up here. Uh, it's not coping very well at the ends, so what we'll do is double click on this and go back to the startup options and set it to manual, and 0.001 will be a good setting of this step to make sure that it closes a bit better. That's better. Okay, now to get the area uh, between the top half and the bottom half, first of all I'm going to press Control and just drag down so we can see what we're doing a bit closer. I'm going to put a point on the top half and a point on the bottom half. That way you can be sure to get an area between the top and the bottom. I should explain that Autograph interprets this as y equals plus and y equals minus the square root of a squared minus x squared. So there's the plus and there's the minus. So I want to double click on this one and set its value to minus a and I want to set the value to this one to plus a. So now I can be sure that that one belongs to the top half and this one belongs to the bottom half and we should right click now be able to find the area and I'm going to use Simpson's rule and five divisions and there we go. So we've got a nice uh, full area here. We now want to put on the axis so I'm going to enter an equation of x equals 2a. If I click OK I actually get a plane so double click on that once again plot it as a 2D because that has no Z or Y. So deselect everything, select the area, select the line and right click, find the volume. That's greyed out because we've chosen the line and around it goes. Now it's actually going off the screen a bit. It's on slow plot which is so deliberate so we get a good view of how it's actually progressing. So what we could do is go to the edit axes and change the x from minus 4 to plus 4 to minus 2 tab 6. And that will just move it along a bit to give us a bit more scope. So now I'm going to select that and delete it. And now let's consider what would happen if instead of uh, a complete error we just had a small strip. So I'm going to change this one, double click, to a new parameter, b. b will be 1 to start with, but if I use the constant controller I can change b to say 0.5 then I want to change this one, double click, to b plus 0.1 that will give us a small element of area and there it is. Now if I double click on that, at the moment it's still set to Simpson's rule, but if I just do an ordinary rectangle 
and only one of them, I will generally get a rectangular area. So now I select that and the axis and right click find the volume and that should give us a nice cylindrical element. Now the console control is in place and therefore if I change B it should take the element around the cycle and even off the edge. But what we want to do now is to have the elements horizontal. In order to do that we're going to have to treat this graph not as a y equals plus and a y equals minus but as an x equals plus and an x equals minus. And that's what's happening on the uh, next screen. So again we'll start from scratch on this one and have a new 3D graph page and right click enter equations. Now we want to put in the equations the other way around so x equals plus square root of a squared minus y squared. Don't forget to plot as a 2D and the startup options as 0 0.001. That's looking good. So now we do the same thing again. Right click enter equation. Uh, we can take it off the history because we want it's that one isn't it so we'll just do that and put in a minus same thing but I forgot to do double click plot as a 2D and also the startup options manual 0 0.001 once again control and drag so this time I want to put a point on the top branch and a point on the bottom branch. So to get the element that I'm interested in, obviously I could do the full area like I did before, I'm going to set this to a value of a parameter B. I've left control down, that's why it's not working. There we are, B, and click OK. Now B will be set to 1, but as before we can change that back to 0.5 or thereabouts, doesn't matter where. Now I want this one to be B plus 0.1. So once again I get a nice element. So I select this point and this point and right click, find the area. I want a rectangle and I just want one of them. There we go. We need to put in our axis, so enter equation x equals to a ok, double click plot as a 2D but first of all we need to select the element of area and the axis to get our element of volume so find the volume, that's greyed out, so off we go and it's a sort of washer shape and once again the value of B can be varied so you can see the full family of possibilities. So that's two quite interesting ways of looking at this generation of the torus. You either produce um, a washer shape with elements horizontally or you produce a cylindrical shape using vertical elements and that was a nice solution to the original problem.